Good morning. Good morning. I thought about playing a trick and do the free frozen pose. But then I was like, then everybody, all the hundreds of people that are lined up to watch are gonna, are gonna delete. So I'm not gonna even tease about that. And it probably will freeze anyway, so we won't make it a joke. Um, anyway, happy Palm Sunday. So good to, good to see you today. It's a, it's a fun day. I love Palm Sunday. Um, Every Sunday celebrates Jesus' resurrection, of course. Um, but if we think about the weeks leading up to the resurrection, uh, the types of things Jesus did, where he went, um, maybe a good way to frame it chronologically, right? We consider these things all year long, but maybe this time of year we can put it in such a way that we remember it uh, in sequence. Um, in order to do that, before we get started here, I wanted to give a resource or show you a resource. It's, in, it's back here. Give me one second. I find this to be very helpful. This is a Harmony of the Gospels by Thomas and Gundry. And what they do is they go through and and do, kind of in column, uh, but Matthew, Mark, Luke, John's biographies of Jesus, and especially toward the end, it can get a little confusing as to what happens when, on, even on what day. And so this is really helpful. Um, I like reading through this, even on you know during this week, Passion Week, uh, the different uh, columns for each week. I think it's only. 20 bucks or so, I don't know. It's not that bad. Um, and then in the back there's some good essays, questions that people bring up, like the you know, Matthew's genealogy, Luke's genealogy, he goes through that. Uh, different questions about things that people raise in saying, well, this, you know, why does this look different? Well, there's definitely a reason, right? Uh, these guys knew each other. It's not like they're going against each other. So, this is a good resource, a harmony of the Gospels for this week. And I'll say this, uh, we are at our church pushing this out, or handing this out today for uh, your perusal throughout the week. Uh, this is uh, Passion Week Devotionals. Thank you, Peggy, for putting in a nice booklet. And uh, on the back, there's a reading schedule for the week. If you want to take Matthew's account, and this is what our church will be doing, we're handling Matthew today, Palm Sunday. And then you could read Matthew's account till Friday night. We'll be looking at Good Friday, what happens on Good Friday together as a church. And then uh, Easter Sunday, next Sunday, we'll be looking at Matthew 28, 1 to 20 uh, as the resurrection. So if you want to follow our church's schedule, you can do Matthew. But if you have a little more time this week, you could read all of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, just remember that, like John, it's half of the book. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's a quarter, at least a quarter of the book. All has to do with this last week of Jesus' life. So, we'll give those out in a little bit. Um, today, I thought we would not do our normal soteriology. We'll pick that up after Easter. Next Sunday, we will not have class. We'll take one Sunday off, trying to prepare. Next Sunday, we're going to do Easter Sunday, and we always have a lot of visitors at our church. A lot of people that come just Easter Sunday. And we thought it would be awesome to have a meal the same Sunday. Why not? Uh, so there will be a lot of work going into preparing the meals and preparing food and helping organize that. So um, that'll be fun. We'd love for everyone to come. And, and those of you who are in this room, if you wouldn't mind slaying a fatted calf and bringing half of it, that would be helpful. Uh, or at least some Italian pastries from a local uh, bakery or something. Something would be helpful um, if you can. Xavier, what are you going to bring? Some water. Water. There we go. Hey, and this week maybe we go pick it up from a waterfall. Wouldn't that be fun? That would do it. Okay. Uh, so what I'd like us to do is just go through a survey of kind of what we do in detail in this booklet and just highlight what's happening throughout the week in Jesus' life in his last week, Passion Week. So we'll pray and we'll jump into a few of these thoughts together. We'll try to finish uh, plenty early today to, to get up the hill here. Um, but along the way, any questions, comments, please share. Our producer is watching the, the stream and making sure that uh, if you make a comment, he can tell me. 
and uh, somebody else should check the sound, please, because I, I think we got the sound right, but we usually get it wrong. Um, and uh, we'll go from here. Okay, anybody feel like opening us in prayer? All right, thank you, man. God, thank you for this afternoon. We can uh, dive into your word and uh, remember Christ who died for us and uh, what was accomplished through that, uh, with all of the uh, events and turmoil that he suffered for, our, for us so we can be brought close to you. Uh, in your name we pray, amen. 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 All right. So, yesterday was Saturday. What happened the Saturday before Easter Sunday? Anybody have a clue? I can't do my cricket. It's all right. <laughs> um. I, I did do a video on it this week. Uh, let's see. So, yesterday was Jesus worshipped by Mary. It would have been Friday night into Saturday night. So, it was either Seder meal Friday night. You know, in the Jewish culture, the day before Sunday would be Friday night to Saturday night. It's, it's a different type of looking at time. Um, and, uh, and so... Either it was late Friday night or, or Saturday day would be the Seder meal. And there's in Bethany, let me find a little map here. I have a, a map of this. Or we'll just keep going. I think I put it under pictures. Um, would have been about a mile away from where uh, where Jesus was staying would be a mile away from Jerusalem and uh, Bethany kind of uh, around the Mount of Olives so you have Jerusalem Mount of Olives would be this mountain range here that overlooks the temple come down the road this way go over the Mount of Olives and there's the main Roman road that goes to Jericho, 17 mile, 3,000 feet drop to Jericho. But going up that hill, up that well, 3,000 feet, that's, that's a mountain. Um, you get to the top of, this, of the Mount of Olives and uh, go through Bethany. Bethany would be where Jesus stayed Saturday night and something special happened there. Uh, Judas confronted one of the ladies. Why did he confront one of the ladies of, of Jesus' band? She put the ointment on his feet. Right? Yeah, and yeah. he was, I mean, he said we could have, didn't he say we could give that to the poor, but really he wanted the money for himself. Right, right. And, and you could imagine that somebody, like let's just say somebody brings $50,000 of perfume today to church. And they're like, I'm just going to pour this out as an offering to the Lord. And you're like, 50,000 bucks, like I could buy some pews, right? Maybe, <laughs> right? So you see maybe we're Judas's point, but he, want, he was a thief. And he was not worshiping Jesus as Lord. But what's fascinating is Mary knew this. Like Mary knew more than all of these guys. He's, Jesus says, she has done this for my burial. So somehow Mary knew that Jesus was going to die. And we don't know how much she knew. Now, he did say it over and over and over, uh, so everybody should have known. Uh, but just for clarification, which Mary? Yeah. Which Mary is this? This would be Mary and Martha, the Mary of Mary and Martha. So Lazarus' uh, sister. Lazarus's sister, yes. And so it's a, a fascinating relationship. We don't know, like Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were very close to Jesus. They were his friends. Uh, you know that the disciples confront Mary before for for sitting at Jesus' feet instead of serving. Well, that was her sister, Martha, that confronted her there. Mary's just always getting, like, come on, guys, give her a break. Uh, she wants to worship the Lord. Um, and uh, there is nothing 
in history that would suggest that there was anything romantic between Mary and Jesus. Nothing. Uh, in the Gnostic writings, 300 years later, it talks about Mary and Jesus. Um, but even then, it's not romantic in any way. So that is uh, drummed up by Da Vinci Code uh, to sell books. Uh, but it has nothing, even in secular history or these Gnostic writings, which have already been debunked as written 300 years after Jesus. I digress here, but just a note on that, okay? If someone starts teaching that uh, throughout this week on, on BBC or whatever, just, just turn it off. It's uh, ridiculous. It would be like I, let's say today I start a, a running commentary on what really happened to, with George Washington. All right, and that he, um, I don't know, he was an alien or he was Joan of Arc. And I, like, and I just did something completely different to what every history book has said up to this point. Um, you know, people have different interpretations of him, but the facts are the facts, right? Uh, let's say 2,000 years from now, somebody looks and sees something written by those who knew George Washington, walked with him, and were within 20 years, 30 years of seeing him. And then they come across my writings written 350 years later. Right. Who should they, as an honest journalist, listen to? The ones written in 1700s, right? But uh, that, that's what some people do not do with Jesus. They'll look at things written 350 years later and say, Oh, what is this about Judas? Hmm, maybe we should believe these writings. No, we have the first-hand documents. Eyewitnesses in Matthew and John. I didn't mean to get into that. Okay, questions, comments? Uh, what are our thoughts about Saturday? And then Sunday is what? The Sunday before Easter Sunday is Palm Sunday. So we're going to talk a lot about that in the service, but Jesus is actually received as king. It's the, the triumph. It's the, it's the climax. It's beautiful. Um, but then it goes fairly downhill fast. Uh, Passion Week. Being found in appearance as a man, Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. All right, so here's a good reading schedule if you're wanting to do this. And, and again, I'll, I'll uh, do this throughout the week on, on my YouTube channel, but we'll have it here. And, and then, uh, I'll try to put these on the church blog as well, uh, the, um, the readings and, and a devotional from each one. Monday, we could summarize those as a curse and a cleansing. A curse and a cleansing. Uh, here, Matthew 21, 19, we'll just dip into Matthew. Seeing a lone fig tree by the road, Jesus came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said to it, no longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. And the fig tree withered suddenly. Right, and it, may, it may have, like they may have seen the effects and it wasn't dried up until the next day, probably. But they do see that it's dying right away. It's fig tree. Um, where Jesus gets the donkey on Sunday uh, is, is called uh, Bethpage Black. Am I getting that? Uh, I'm getting that confused with golf. Uh, it's not <laughs> Bethany. I think it is called Bethpage. Uh, but no black, yeah. Um, Bethpage, that actually means in Hebrew, house of unripe figs and it's kind of like this forecasting to later in the chapter where Jesus curses the fig tree and it's a picture of really the Jewish leaders Jesus has been calling them to repent calling them to repent waiting for fruit and does he find figs no there's no fruit there's no fruit and so this cursing of the fig tree is not Jesus using like magical powers like some wizard. It is a denunciation for everyone going back and forth along this road. Wow, we saw this in full bloom just a little bit ago. No figs, but very healthy, and today it's unhealthy. How quickly, how quickly what we look externally to be pleasant can be um, discarded and dead. So, you have that, and then Jesus comes into Jerusalem, and he does the same. 
Uh, he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were buying and selling in the temple, overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he would not permit anyone to carry merchandise through the temple. Like, it's hard not to spend a lot of time on each of these thoughts. But like that is a massive undertaking for Jesus to actually take over the temple on one of their highest days of worship and station disciples at the gates saying you are not allowed to bring any produce or oxes or lambs through here and every other year they come in there other than when he did it the first time and it's like chaos and stink and money chain tables and and animals and crates of doves and this time it's quiet and people are praying And it's an amazing difference because Jesus has taken over the temple with this rabble of 12 young men. Fascinating. And and a lot of folks that that worshipped him Monday. He began to teach them, saying, It's not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. You've made it a robber's den. So this is where, where the Sadducees get involved. Like the Pharisees have had trouble with Jesus all along. And the Sadducees to a certain extent as well. But at this point, it starts hitting their money. All right. Follow the money. And, and when Jesus starts cutting their purse strings, they get angry. Uh, and this is often the case with religion. Uh, you follow the money, external religion, and you see where there's problems. And uh, so they, they, they are wanting to destroy Jesus now because he has overturned the tables. Uh, he has cleansed the temple. Um, and, and for a day, for at least one day, no one is, and this is like a football field. This is not a small thing, like larger than a football field amount of space that he has taken over. And he will not let anyone cross through with their their goods and services. Um, It's just amazing amount of power and authority. So I think what Matthew's doing is he's showing us, and we'll talk about this uh, in the service just briefly, but Matthew goes through Jesus as the perfect prophet, the perfect priest, and the perfect king. Matthew 21, right at the beginning, verses 1 to 11, he's the perfect king. He's received as king. Monday, he's the perfect priest. Because look, he's cleansing the temple. Tuesday, same thing. Any, any thoughts or questions on that? Let me just, just read this. and um, Perhaps it's easy for you to see how these two events correspond, fig tree and temple. Jesus entered Jerusalem, hopefully to find fruit of the people who showed some promise triumphal entry, but as he entered the temple, he found it just the same as the first time. He entered her gates at the beginning of his public ministry. He looked for fruit, and he found none. How applicable to us. How often during the Easter season do we show great promise of religiousness, right? Everybody show it up with bright paisley. I got paisley, man. It's like Easter. Isn't it Easter somewhere in the Bible? Uh, but all this show, but where's the heart? It's very easy to, to dress up and paint the egg really colorful, but you still bite in the yolk and it tastes like a yolk. Um, which I like eggs, but maybe not hard boiled eggs. Those are so dry. How often we go through traditional looking good on the outside, but you, t- you bite in and there's just, it just tastes the same. And Jesus is the same thing. He just sees their tradition and they're like whitewashed sepulchers. Um, Jesus wants the, the fruit of Mary, bowing before him, offering him herself, all that she has. Uh, he wants that in our, our own lives as well. Okay, thoughts or comments before we move to Tuesday? Okay, so Sunday, he's the perfect what? King. Palm Sunday. Monday, he's the perfect priest. So what does that leave? We need a perfect prophet. And you go to Tuesday, and it's Teaching Tuesday. Uh, two meetings, two motives, one divine purpose. I'm just picking out one of these, but if, if we would, like if you go here, look at all this. Um, there is just a whole lot of public teaching that Jesus does on this day. Now, the biggest chunk of teaching would be Thursday into Friday, where Jesus shares all this intimate detail with his disciples. And that's a huge chunk of the whole Gospel of John. But Matthew, Mark, and Luke, on Tuesday, you see Jesus publicly proclaiming. In fact, at the end of the triumphal entry, some are saying, this is this prophet. 
and and you see these prophetic both foretelling the future and foretelling God's judgment on the leaders of Israel on Tuesday. Okay. Um, but let's just look at the, the two meetings that I think are fascinating. If we look at two motives, one divine purpose, on Tuesday you have these two huge meetings. One is Jesus finishing uh, teaching in public. <laughs> He's lamblasting the Pharisees, like all throughout the day. He's like, don't follow them. They're a bunch of hypocrites. Don't follow them. They're a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, all these people have done is followed them. Uh, because of their external show, their whole lives. And then Jesus comes in, cleanses the temple, and says, stop following these guys. They're going to send you to hell by your legalistic religion. When Jesus had finished all these words, he said to the disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man is to be handed over for crucifixion. He tells them once again, listen, uh, Friday's coming, I'm going to die by crucifixion. Then the chief priests and elders of the people were gathered together. Another gathering together in the court of the high priest named Caiaphas, and they begin to plot out what Jesus says they're going to plot out. They plot together to seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. But maybe not during the festival because the people are going to make a riot. Right? So you know, eventually they come around and say, well, let's just do it in the middle of the night. Um, but they start to plot to seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. But I do like this idea, though, uh, juxtaposing these two scenes is telling. The most powerful council in Jerusalem schemes, while the rabbi, which is a small rabbi, a small rabble of followers, reveals what will happen, what they in intend to do. And, and it's just showing this, this is God doing this. God is bringing this all together. God the Father in heaven is superintending all. He brings even the schemes of the wicked to his purpose. God's not taken by surprise from Sunday to Friday. Uh, the plan was instituted before humanity existed. Jesus came to die. Uh, stretch of imagination, but I see Satan delighted while watching the schemes of religious leaders, and most likely Judas plots the details of Jesus' death. But I see the Father is delighted on the other side that his son tells his followers what they have planned to do will come to fruition. My son, in whom I am well pleased, who is willing to take the cup of wrath that you and I deserve. Okay, so that's Tuesday. Thoughts or comments on Tuesday? If you want, you could read that this coming Tuesday. Uh, that would be a good, uh, good practice. Hey, yay, yay, where's the microphone? Now, if you guys didn't say that, maybe, oh, I have 10 texts. No. It sounded good when I checked. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for checking. I think it's okay. It's got a little scruffle thing. Now it's probably like screaming. I think we're okay. So that was Tuesday. We're not going to start all over. Uh, let's keep going. What about Wednesday? This is fascinating. Anyone want to take a stab at Wednesday? Just I, look at Wednesday. It's like we just don't know. Nothing. <laughs> like nothing that we can put, pin put for Wednesday. So it does seem like, yes, there's, okay, we're getting ready. Um, maybe you spent the day in Bethany. Maybe you came into the temple. They, they would normally travel that mile every day. So maybe he went in, but we don't know anything that happened. Perhaps he spent the day in prayer. I was just reading today, before Jesus chose his disciples, he spent the whole night in prayer. Uh, so that could be it. Uh, we do know this, though. Um, Let's see, do I get to this? No. Uh, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this, is, this would probably be the day that Judas planned with the high priests. That may have happened Tuesday night, but it may have happened Wednesday where Jesus plans with the high priests to betray Jesus. And so I think that does fit well with this Isaiah 53. 
He was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. Like a lamb that is set, led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its shears, so he did not open his mouth. Um, and so as the lambs were brought and prepared for the Passover sacrifice, uh, so Jesus was silently preparing for the Passover sacrifice on Wednesday. The quiet lamb submission to the Father's will. Jesus was willing to die because it pleased his Father. So he continued the walk each day submissive as a lamb being led to the slaughter. Jesus was playing with those who would in a few hours betray him, forsake him, and run. I see the Father in pain watching his Son's submission to his will. And I see the Father and Son delighted to bring this plan to fruition. To continue to allow the week to progress that the world that would secure our eternal redemption through faith in Jesus' sacrifice he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. All right, Thursday, before our Easter Sunday, uh, look at this. John chapter 13 to 19, six chapters of the Gospel of John that come from Thursday. Um, and and some, Matthew, Mark, and Luke as well, some of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, this is Jesus' upper room discourse as he's bringing them to uh, the the. Garden of Gethsemane. So it, it you know, happens Thursday into Friday morning. Uh, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. And I love this. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. And so as Jesus is preparing us, uh, Jesus is preparing for the ultimate sacrifice. And he spends it with friends. Um, and he's going to say, listen, my, my greatest sacrifice to you is being your friend. And I'm going to lay down my life for you as your friend. And I will say this. If you can, this week, think about um, uh, Passover, I'm sorry, the uh, Passion Week. It'd be great to take some time Thursday to read through John 13 to 19. And uh, just let those hit you. And then Friday, uh, take up the reading back from Matthew. But just some precious, precious uh, passages as Jesus repairs them, says the Comforter is going to come, um, prepares them with the, the Lord's table, right? Um, all of that coming Thursday into Friday morning. Now, uh, now contrast the next few hours between Jesus and his friends. <laughs> uh, Jesus goes beyond washing their feet. He fulfills his promise. He dies for them. Uh, and his dying for them is the deeper form of sacrifice than we could ever imagine. His dying is taking upon himself the punishment for their sin. He faces capital punishment for their friends. So along the way, what are they doing? Right, just kind of contrast these two. What do we find the disciples doing in the last day or two? Falling asleep. They're falling asleep, yeah. While, while Jesus is saying, hey, pray with me, pray with me. Now, it's all late at night, we understand. Hey, your flesh is willing, your spirit is willing, your flesh is weak. They're falling asleep. What else are they doing? They're running away. They're fleeing. Yeah, yeah. Peter is promising. Yeah. Jesus says, listen, I'm ready to lay down my life for you as your friend. Peter's like, me too, man. I'm ready to die for you. Um... What happened before that? What did Jesus do for them? He washed their feet, right? And what did the disciples? They, they refused, didn't they? And they even fought about who was the greatest. So here you have... I, I do see Peter's, Peter's just really enjoying the first two days, Monday, Tuesday, especially Sunday. I mean, Sunday, he's like, dude, that's, this is it. We're taking over the temple. The city is accepting us. This, I'm finally going to be King Peter, or, you know, sub-king. Uh, and then, then James and John's mom comes over and tries to raggle. Hey, listen, this Peter's really pushy. Um, James and John, my sons, could they be on your right hand and left hand? Peter starts fighting with them along the way, saying, Hey, why, the, why are the sons of Zebedee trying to gain prominence? They're fighting, right? They're, they're, they're jockeying for position in Jesus' cabinet. Um, they're totally focused on the here and now. Uh, and uh, 
this is Christianity today, right? It's like, you know, what, what can Jesus give me? I'll try him if he, you know, he gives me a relationship. I'll try him if he heals my cancer. I'll try him if he helps me win the lottery. Uh, but, you know, if he doesn't, eh, right, this is human nature. Uh, but Jesus is coming for a bigger reason than that, right? He's coming. Uh, so what does Jesus do in response? He is coming to die, right? He does what to their feet? He washes their feet, yeah. Instead of falling asleep, what does he do? He prays for them. He prays what? Drops of blood, right? So he is agonizing for them. Uh, so quite a contrast between Jesus and the disciples. Uh, okay, they're asleep. The garden is Jesus prays so passionately under such duress. He sweats blood. That is before the trouble even starts. One of his friends come with a huge number to arrest him. Um, I mean, what a horrible thing. Jesus is ready to die for them. The friend is kissing him and, and saying, Phileo, all right, this show of agape. And Jesus says, you're my friends, I, I agape you. Uh, and, and this is, the, the word kiss in Greek is a word that's similar to phileo. It's a form of the word phileo, this sign of friendship. Um, and so he gives him this sign of friendship as he stabs him in the back. Uh, the other friends are still rubbing their eyes of sleep as Judas kisses Jesus in order that the soldiers will know which one to point and nab. Um, couldn't he just point Jesus out? Why the hypocritical kiss? And, and Jesus asked Judas that. He's like, you could have just pointed at me. You could have said smack him on the head. He's like, betray us, me with a kiss, Judas? Like, you really told him that? You really wanted to get that close to me and, and not say it's the guy wearing red? Right? Uh, it's so bad. Judas is so, like, he is so mad at this point. Um, I don't know if it's still the $50,000 that was spent Saturday night, but something happened here that made him snap. I don't know, uh, was it uh, Sight and Sound kind of picked up that, that is the, you know, that he wanted to be a thief, but he also wanted to be wealthy. And his whole thing, oh, let me be wealthy, let me be wealthy. And he follows Jesus and finds out, oh, he's coming to die. I'm never going to be wealthy on, in this life. And, and yeah, yeah, 30 shekels of silver does not make him wealthy. Uh, the soldiers come. The other friends forsake him and flee. Peter, the chief of friends, swore he would never leave Jesus' side, uh, looks from a distance to see the end. While he watches the distance, he swears and curses and says, I do not know Jesus. Um, have you ever had a friend like that? No, no. Uh, they, they, they are no friend at all if they are if they're refusing to acknowledge you in the difficult in the most difficult of times. Uh, but Jesus does this for us. He goes to bat uh, and he finds um, he dies in our place in our stead. Beautiful picture. So that's that's leaving us to Friday. I'm going to leave Friday for Good Friday, uh, and uh, so please come. To, to our service on Good Friday and, uh, and Palm Sunday, but Good Friday we'll, we'll celebrate together and we'll remember what Jesus uh, does for us on Friday. Thoughts, comments, questions on the Passion Week here? If you had your way, what day would you want to be there? Other than Friday, I would want to be there Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, it's hard. But how about, how about Saturday through... Saturday through Thursday. Wouldn't that be powerful? The cleansing of the temple. Yeah. I would just love to see the Caiaphas' face, you know? Uh, they lost a lot of money that day as he turns over the tables. I, I would love to be in the meal on Saturday and just be with the friends. That would be so cool to see how Jesus interacted with his friends, uh, but also see Judas's reaction. It would be hard not to call them all out. Listen, you guys think you're friends. Well, you have, let me tell you what's going to happen Friday night. Well, Jesus tells them they still do it. Okay. All right, any other questions, comments? We'll be done. Okay, let's pray. Lord, uh, we thank you so much for... Uh, your grace in our lives for um, being our friend, the friend that sticks closer than a brother, 
Uh, Lord, help us to uh, follow you, take up our cross in that way, that we would die to self, die to our own desires, and uh, live for you. Uh, please uh, strengthen and bless uh, each person here, um, all the needs and uh, burdens on each heart, and then also please um, those uh, watching online that you would bless and, and strengthen them. Uh, and then in our service to follow, the worship service to follow, may you be honored in all that's done and said. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, very good. Two quick quick announcements, and unless there's another announcement, we'll, we'll just finish. Um, uh, next Sunday, there's no class, okay? So it's just Easter, and then the following Sunday, we'll get back to soteriology. And, uh, and then come, come and see us at 1, okay? Palm Sunday, you have, have time to turn this off and, and show up and uh, fill up the house with worshipers. Okay. All right, we're dismissed. Xavier, turn us off here. Producer, fire up the credits. <laughs>